streaming live okay hey everyone we are finally live on facebook i'm nick baldwin from lab code agents and i'm super excited today because artificial intelligence and predictive analytics are like the wave of the future right now and the guys i have on today mike schneider and jim harvey from first.io which is an application that taps into your database and basically tells you who you need to reach out to and when, because those people are most likely to make a move in the very near future. And you want to know how I know this app works? Because today I was hit with a very real, real, a very realistic realization by Mike. I look on the app. And because the app XMS, it tells you who in your database listed and sold their home this year. And I missed out on 32 sales and 20 million in volume because I didn't follow up as well as I should have in my, da in my database. And First.io showed me that very real data. So all of you out there saying predictive analytics doesn't work, well, I'm gonna tell you something. This, this realization was, 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 uh, was hard truth, very hard truth. So thanks guys for being on, on with us today. I'm really excited to talk about it. Uh, let's get right into uh, who you guys are and, and what the product is specifically and why it's so important for agents to leverage their database. That's a lot of very, very broad questions, but yeah, well, go for it. Nick, thank you. It's been fun watching uh, lab code agents just explode. And uh, we've been friends for a long time, tracking along. You, I think you were tracking along since our very first like Realogy Forward presentation when we were just yeah. kind of the first version built, and that was almost four years ago. So I've got, I've got Jim here now who's part of our senior team and, and heads up all of our growth and partnerships. And he'll actually walk through the app. But I figured we'd, we'd talk a little bit about the problems you, you were mentioning there. We built this whole company around one problem, and we've raised over $10 million of venture funding to solve that, and that is to help agents win more business by focusing on the people they already know in their network. And so we've been working, building this platform out. And like you said, there's a lot of amazing features that we'll walk through here in a second, but it's backed by a guarantee because a lot of people are talking about predictive analytics, but haven't spent the millions of dollars on data and have data scientists on staff and build a really simple, fun, easy to use product. And that's kind of where, what I'm, I'm proud of. So, you know, our whole goal here is to help you get more listings. Nick, don't feel bad about 32 listings. I saw somebody, Judy from Chicago. I was in Chicago a couple weeks ago and an agent was literally walking towards me with their phone open to the app because he had missed 68 listings so far uh, in, in the Chicago wow. area. So um, uh, don't feel bad about it. Yeah, it's normal. We just have never been able to see that data before, right? It's always been invisible because you, it's hard enough to keep up with your past clients, let alone everyone you know. So, you know, we've all had this feeling. Whenever we post this ad to Facebook, we get like hundreds of comments. Um, and you've seen the stats, right? Nard talks about this. Everybody's talking about the fact that only 12% of people that say they would work with you again actually do. I, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks as a consumer at one point because we've done three transactions with a phenomenal agent. And I used to say, Nick, that there's no postcard you could send me that was going to convince me that you're a better agent than the guy I've used three times, right? And so that's why we don't blast out postcards and all this other stuff. But then I came home one day and my wife says, hey, we're going to go see some homes with Julie. I'm like, who's Julie? Right? But she had been having conversations with this agent at school and we were thinking about school districts and all that stuff. And, you know, three conversations trumped the pumpkin pie invites, the drip campaign. I hadn't talked to Jet, you know, this guy in like 11 months. Right? And so that's really what we're getting at. We're expressly not solving this problem. And I think this is the one you know, that there are a lot of great companies that are working on, which is, you know, generating more and more leads. But what's fascinating to me is that despite all the work to clean through those, the vast majority of deals still come via relationship. And there just haven't been a lot of great companies that have invested just as much time and, and money and development effort working on that side. Does that make sense? Well, I just want to interject real quick and say that, you know, you said your wife came home and said, we're going to, you know, buy or sell a house with Julie. And you said, who's Julie? And she's like, an agent that she started having conversations with. 
So the thing is, you know, the idea is obviously not to just pop back into your past clients' lives when you think they're going to sell their house, right? The idea is to just continuously keep in touch with them. And what I love about the app and the hard truth that I just learned today was that if I was better at that with more people in my database and I was continuing to have meaningful conversations, then those deals would have had more of a chance of just kind of falling in my lap. That's right. And, you know, it's really funny. We beat ourselves up about having to stay in touch with everyone all the time. Um, you know, it, it's true and it's not, you know, the, I don't need to hear every single year, but I've heard it over and over again from our agents that said, man, you prompted me to follow this person I hadn't talked to in three years, but we used to coach soccer together. And I just followed up and said, Hey, I'd love to catch up. And sure enough, just getting into conversation at the right time, you know, is what won me that deal. It wasn't that I had to talk to him every quarter for three years, but if I knew what was that there was stuff going on in their lives from first that makes them more likely to move, that's where we, we focus on it. But Nick, everybody understands this, right? So many deals come from our network. We know that. What most agents have never seen is what you saw in the app today, is that we've got thousands of agents now where we have the data and we look at how many of the deals they're winning in their MLS. And most of them, if you ask them, say, oh yeah, I missed two or three last year. It's usually 30 or 40 or 50. Well, so I just want to in real quickly. So I had the app <clears throat> and when, when you guys recently made a really great addition to the app that connects to your MLS and so what the app does is it takes your database and it and attempts to match physical addresses to people in your database. And then so when it gets an exact match, it can then connect that address to properties in your MLS. Okay. So while I may have 32 that the app knows about, I mean, it, it could be 40, it could be 50, it could be 60. So, you know, right. it's, really, it's really an endless amount. Yeah, you bring up a great point there, and we'll get into it a little bit and how it works, Nick. But the, the, the re reason we haven't been able to see this is because none of us have time to go sit down and look up, you know, the, I, you and I were talking, you have like 4,000 contacts between your phone and your email. N none of us have time to go look up their addresses and try to figure out where they live and if that's current. But the fact that we could add 2,000 of those properties in for you and then just do that automatically, that's where this is starting to, you know, now you can focus your time on actually following up. So that's what we're trying to, we're trying to work on. So what, where else do we fit? You know, a lot of, a lot of agents are always trying to figure out where does first fit in my workflow and all of that. You know, you ha probably have a great newsletter and marketing campaigns and all the ongoing stuff that goes to everyone where we're trying to fit is right. The Julie scenario, who should I actually have a phone call with today? And it doesn't have to be magical. There's no perfect script. Who should I actually connect with relationally? And so we're kind of that conversation layer and that's what, when, when Jim shows you the app, it's all, it's all mobile and it's really easy to go through and, and check through that. Well, to touch on that, you know, I talk about this a lot where it's interesting how agents are more afraid to reach out to people that they know and that they've done deals with uh, and ask for business than they are complete strangers, you know, on the internet, which I find to be completely um, backwards, really. Uh, <laughs> right. And, you know, and Facebook recently did their their real estate insights report and for 2019 it was the first one they ever did really in depth and they found that 51 percent of people who are buying homes uh are there more their people 51 percent of people who are in the market to buy a house are more inclined to make a purchase if they feel that there's a personalized experience attached to it and so i would have to attribute you know making that per those personalized touches to definitely being a portion of that 51 Totally agree. You, yeah, and you, that's the, you just nailed this next part, which is part of why I named the company first, which is the worst name for SEO ever. So like this is, it's, it's, you know, if you're trying to find us, go to first.io. But, you know, the, the Julie story, we come back here too, is if you go and make that personal connection and we had a, we had a broker, um, uh, the owner at properties, he was, he was saying he's seeing a lot of his agents that were getting frustrated because, you know, they'd have a customer that sold with Redfin. They say, oh, I just forgot, right? But what, you, what we've also found is if you were the first one to have just a personal outreach, and it can just be a text message of, hey, checking in, was thinking about you, would love to catch up. Um, there is it, so many people just go with that first person that makes a relational connection. So um, that's, the, that's why we named the company first, why we leverage cool machine learning to get you there before they've made the decision to sell, and, and that's a big part of it. So... One way I like to summarize it, Nick, I don't know if you've heard me say this before, but that conversations win clients and not campaigns. So the sooner we, that's why we want to drive you straight to getting into a conversation and that's easiest with people you already know. So, um, so that's it. And, and really that, that changes the problem we're solving a little bit. 
you know, we thought at first that we were going to build this hyper targeted marketing, uh, you know, outbound engine. And it turns out that the most, the fastest way we can get you, get you five more listings is focusing your time that you're having in reaching out and making personal connections and thinking about that one text message you should send on people that are going to be selling. So we're, we're really about how do we help you use your call time, your conversation time, your connection time uh, more valuable. And that's how we help you win listings from people already know. So uh, Nick, we, you know, you brand this around how it, how it works. Um, I, I figured we'd go through just a few of the key features, but I love for Jim to actually show it to you. Um, but you know, the first part is we actually help you build out your database. So this isn't, this isn't just a platform. One of the things we heard from thousands of agents over and over again is I don't need one more tool to sit in front of and try to enter data into, right? So we're actually a data platform and that's why it, it now takes, I like to time people at these events when they're signing up. And Nick, I think since you came on, we probably rebuilt onboarding like four times. And usually it takes them like less than five minutes, like three minutes and 30 seconds or under five minutes. It probably took you like two hours because that was like a couple of years ago. You know, we've, we've made that better and better and better. Um, yeah. But then we build it out with all that property. So you don't have to go hunt stuff down. We flag, you know, duplicates and realtors and stuff like that. So then we're tracking the, those wins and losses. So for the first time, you can see the total potential in your network. And then, of course, we want to prioritize people are going to be moving so you can uh, win more listings. Does that make sense? Any questions there? It's pretty, pretty simple, but. No, to totally, man. Sweet. You know, the well, funny thing is, like, <clears throat> here's the problem with agents, right? I mean, here's one of the problems with agents. I love agents. So don't get me wrong. Me but too. The thing is, they spend, yeah, they spend, right. This is why you're building these things. They spend their money on things that, that are a waste of money, right? So like uh, investing in tools that help you stay front and center to your existing customers and database and then seeing the opportunities that you, I mean, I missed 20 million in volume this year from people that I, that I dropped the ball on. Like, to me, like, if I, if I had just been more purposeful with more people in my database, spending money on an app like this would have made complete sense. That's right. So, and I like to put you on a on huge point that was a huge driver for me. Yeah. When we were yeah. building out the businesses, I also really care about the, the agent entrepreneur and every conversation and everything you're investing in your database is actually an investment. And I, I, I hate the lack of the, you know, a lot of the investment in leads and all those other things. It can, it definitely drives business and don't get me wrong. We pay for leads too, right? There's nothing bad. I'm not, I don't want to talk bad about it, but it's not as much of an investment in the long term, right? And so if we can help you get your database together and filled out and you can start to see the total potential and we can help you go from winning 20% to winning 40%, yeah. it actually cascades. You're building an asset. Um, and that's one of the things that gets me really excited about the approach. Well, I also want to say, because I do, by the way, I mean, I do purchase leads, obviously, you know, I, I don't want someone to call me out on saying, Hey, but you purchase yeah, leads. Same. Yes, I do. <laughs> However, 60% of my business has always been repeat and referral. Yep. So a much, more than half of my business has been repeat and referral. Yep. So I do invest in leads because I have a team. And when you have a team, right. you need to feed them. But I also teach them how to keep in touch with people at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Jim always points out here too on the, on the database side that it's an ongoing sync. So we kind of freaked out a, a, an inman reporter at one point because we had had a phone call ahead of our interview. And when we jumped on the interview to show him the demo, uh, a card popped up in the app and it said new contact synced and his card was at the top with his address in Colorado. He said, how in the world do you know where I live? Right. It's like, well, we had a phone call. So this is always in sync with your phone and your email. So it's automatically cleaning up and filling out and building out your database for you and, and then telling you who you should prioritize. Um, so that's, that's that side. Uh, Jim, do you want to talk through the seller side? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm going to hop off mute here. You mind go cool. Hey, so um, what, uh, why this is really interesting to me is I'm actually a licensed broker here in North Carolina. I started my career in real estate. Mike showed me this about a year ago and I just had to drop what I was doing and jump in um, because it just blew me away that this technology was helping us as realtors um, leverage technology this way. So this is um, it, what, what I'm going to show you now is after we clean your database up and admittedly, most agents databases uh, are pretty much of a disaster. Their phone is full of realtors and duplicates. 
Um, I, Nick, I noticed with yours, we, uh, we actually had almost 1,500 agents and 2,000 duplicates that were removed um, through that process. So, but once we do that, we get the agent kind of in good shape to start doing the outreach, um, then this is where the unique approach first is taken really kicks in. So a lot of what you hear about in real estate, um, predictive analytics and machine learning, a lot of that is very reliant on what people are doing online or in an app somewhere. It's, it's what they're clicking on, what they're searching for. And, and that's okay. That's a forum. Uh, it's a way to identify buyers a lot of times. But what we found is by the time they get to that point, there are usually lots of other agents around them. You know, one false click and you have 14 agents calling you within 12 seconds. So what we have specifically tried to do is focus on how do we get you in front of people that are likely to list their home in the next six to 12 month window? Who has the most pressure on them? So when I was uh, starting in real estate, I was always taught, you know, look for the people that have been in their home over five or seven years. Um, look for the people whose kids are going off to college or expectant mothers. And if they do have kids, did the school district just change or the crime rate change in the neighborhood? Um, or there are separations or divorces going on. All these types of triggers and signals that happen, there's only so much the human mind can keep track of in a certain number of people. So what first is, is done is hone this algorithm to really zero in on what causes a listing event to happen in the U.S. So we've been monitoring every U.S. property address and also the people in those addresses for literally hundreds of signals, just like I described, that can piece together who, uh, how likely they are to list. So the way we do that is not in a creepy way. So we're not gonna tell you that, hey, Mike and uh, you know, Julie are getting divorced. It's more like, look, of the 6,000 people that you uploaded to us, we cleaned it up and here are the ones with these gold seller stars. Anyone that you see a star by one of your contacts means they are more likely than the average person to list their property this year. So the people with three stars are the most likely. That's where we coach agents to start focusing on that. So if you see three stars, on average, you're gonna see about one in five of those people list their property this year. It's gotten that good. So we've actually gotten so confident in the data, um, click on this, Mike, we've actually put a guarantee in place. And I, I've never seen anybody else back it up this way. But if you will use first, and, um, and sync it with your contacts, we will guarantee you that at least 15 listings we're gonna predict for you, and we're gonna predict those at least two months before any listing event happens. So Wait, hold most on agents second. will see many more than this, but at a minimum, if you're taking the recommendations we give you, you're gonna put yourself in front of more listings. Now, wait a minute. Are you predicting, are you guaranteeing 15 listings that they'll get or 15 people in their database will have listed their home yeah because because the skill to list those isn't in the app it's with the agent that's a really so important distinction Mike, nick yeah that's yeah. super important because we can get you shots on goal and we will when we when jim shows you the app we will nudge you we'll remind you we'll beat you up you know with text messages we'll show you the people that we predicted that did just list so that you can follow up with more but uh it's on you to have to win it and you're going to have the best shot at that with people you know but you know candidly we've had some agents that are new to the game that have never had a listing and we we can get them we've in some cases got them in front of 28 or 30 listings and they haven't won very many of them i can't help you with your listing presentation but I do guarantee that at the end of 12 months, you're going to look back at all the transactions that have happened. And there's going to be more than 15 that we predicted that we told you about at least two months in advance. Yeah. So that's the guarantee. That's right. Yeah. Not that you'll get 15 and, listings because that's. And, you, and the reason we, the reason the we came out with this is there are a lot of people out there promising a lot of things and we're, we're not trying to oversell anyone on anything. It's, it's really powerful. It can make you much more productive you know, you can meet with someone who's going to be selling every fifth conversation instead of every 20th, right? Um, but when somebody offers you, you know, 16,000 times ROI and all that stuff, there's a lot of swirl out there right now. And the, the fact of the matter is, you're not going to win any of these listings if you don't have any conversations, right? And, and it's just not going to happen, but we can, we can give you a huge leg up and we want, we want people to know that we put our money where our mouth is. For sure, for sure. Love yeah. it. Sweet. So can I just ask you guys a question? 
So uh, where does the data come from? Like, how do you predict this stuff? Are you going to get, or do you get into that? Do you have another yeah, slide? No, on I'm that? happy to do that. Why don't I, why don't I roll through that while Jim's actually pulling up the app? So um, we are venture backed company. So we've raised a lot of money and spent a lot of that on data. And so we partnered with um, a bunch of the, the big data providers. And so we have data on consumer data, things like, uh, you know, how many kids are in the home and what ages, right? And, and that's important when you pair that up with school district data and all that type of thing. Um, we have life events, which are really key, you know, expected mothers or job changes or income changes and things like that. Um, and then all the property information and property data, of course. Um, and so there's a bunch of different large data sets and data sources across 214 million individuals. And um, so, uh, you know, I don't know how, how, you know, this is a, how it works. So maybe I'll give one quick overview, but um, a lot of people in this space, predictive analytics is a, is a very broad term. Uh, Nick, you probably heard that a lot. Machine learning is actually a pretty unique thing where the, the machine actually does learn how to solve the problem. Um, and so here's the best summary I've ever heard of it, Nick, is, you know, if Jim was mentioning all the factors. And if we had built this 15 years ago, or like when smarts have started or some of these others, right, you would actually do what's called logistic regression. You'd figure out what each factor in and of itself contributed, and then you try to combine them. Does that make sense? So you'd be like, well... Because we all know if you just looked at people who live in their home for five years, that doesn't mean all of them are going to move. It's a, fa it's, it's a factor. It's not the factor. It's a little bit, little bit of lift. Or the one I like to use is my wife and I popped in when we were expecting our third kid. So if you just had expectant mothers, that's a pretty good factor. But in and of itself, it's not that powerful, right? When you take all the pieces together that it's your third kid, you live in a 1,200 square foot townhouse, and you make this amount of money, that's where you can be five times as likely. So here's, how, here's the best uh, explanation of machine learning and how it's different what we couldn't have done 15 years ago is back then you would program all those factors. You'd say, here are the factors. Let me put data in and let me get the result out. Does that make sense? With machine learning, what you actually do is you say, um, here is the goal I am trying to defi define. They either sold or they didn't. I want to predict that. Here's a bunch of data. Now let the machine figure out the rules. And so we didn't tell the machine to look for people that were, th were getting separated. The machine figured that out because it looked at spending changes and it looked at, you know, ways people moving and, and having a new address at it and all these other things. So the, the machine has actually figured out all the combinations that make someone really likely. And as, as Jim put it, those that have pressure on them to move. So we didn't go through and tell it everything. We went through and gave it a bunch of data and it figured out the rules that actually lead people to move. It's pretty cool. Sorry, I was muted. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, so here's the issue, <clears throat> I think, with a lot of uh, companies that do predictive analytics, right? The, the issue is that there's no real hard proof that, that it works. Or like I've used all sorts of companies that do mailers and all this other stuff, right? But when I logged into the app and it connected to my MLS and it connected physical addresses to properties in the MLS and it showed me there were 32 people in my database that listed their home this year and it was 20 million in volume. I mean, that just blew my mind, dude. Like <laughs> that just blew my mind because like, yeah. you know, there's still a lot of misunderstanding around predictive analytics and yeah. around uh, AI in general. Right. But it's becoming so smart. And in real estate, we're super slow to adapt when really like, you know, now's the time to just jump on board because everybody yeah. and their mother is in your database except for you. You know, well, like, Nick, I won't throw I won't throw the industry under the bus on that one. Actually, no, no, I, what think, I, mean is, I think that it's actually a, a, a failure on the part of service providers. And I had the great fortune at Inman, Nick, of being on a panel, and it was yeah. what's what's the future of predictive analytics and AI. And my great fortune was I got to go last. So there were all these others talking about all this cool new data, all these things that were coming, and I said I'm really excited for when we stop selling predictive analytics. Hey, do you want to stop sharing your screen so we can talk? Yeah, man, let's do it. Um, I said, I'm so excited for when we stop selling predictive analytics. And my point is, I said, who bought a microchip last month? Yeah. You didn't buy a microchip. You bought the fancy new iPhone. You bought your iWatch. You bought a watch. You bought all these things. You buy the result. You buy the product. Who cares what's underneath? But your point is, people are saying, we do predictive analytics as if that's something you would buy to kind of obfuscate the fact that they're just sending out a postcard right? And so what's the product you're trying to deliver? If you want to build an intelligent postcard system, tell me that you're building an intelligent postcard system. Then I can evaluate if I want a postcard system, right? And that's what I want, I want to get to here is 
guys, we've actually built a tool that saves you a ton of time. And it's not just with some fancy, cool whiz bang technology. It's doing the cleanup because we found that that was a big barrier for agents. We listened to them. They said, this is really great, but there's 200 agents I have to sort through. So we solved for that, right? And then, yeah, we want to make you four times as efficient and connect with people are going to list. But again, the tool is here to help you have conversations. I don't care how good the intelligence is. If you don't have a conversation, we're not actually helping you. That's true. Well, that's true. And so I see a lot of, I see a lot of agents who are using uh, technology that is, that is uh, AI driven and predictive analytics. And they're not, they're not leveraging the human element, right? They're, they're, just banking on the tech doing all of the work. Um, somebody's asking, what is this? No, this is, what, what are we talking about? They just dropped in. First.io, um, yeah. it's, a, uh, it's an app that connects to your database and predicts who in your database is the most likely to sell their home within the next, well, it's and, ranks them, right? There's like that's a, and, that's, and that's the other reason we're all mobile, Nick, is when we looked at what's the problem we're actually trying to solve, which is how do we help you get in conversations that are gonna help you win business? When we went mobile, our engagement went through the roof because sure. now it's going to remind you and it's easy to set next steps and it's easy to call right out of the app and have it all locked. So why don't we just kick it over to, to Jim to actually show it to you because I think yeah, once sure. people see how easy it is, um, that'll be fun too. Go for it. But anyway, Nick, I, I think predictive analytics and AI are, are going to be part of every system out there. But we, we shouldn't throw any agent on the bus for not being up to speed on predictive analytics and machine learning. That's for the techies. With, you know, there should be, we, we should see huge improvements in products that make your day so much better. And that's what we're trying to do here. Anyway, over to you, Jim. Cool. Uh, I'll yeah. go unmute. Uh, hey, so the, the first thing I want to show you, and to Mike's point, we could have the best predictive analytics uh, of who's going to list. If agents don't actually use it, it doesn't matter. And so the first step for a lot of agents to get there, I'm going to jump over to just a really quick, uh, view of what it did for me, literally in just a matter of hours. So I synced this with my iPhone and with my two Gmail accounts, and I had a total of 1,602 contacts. First, automatically merged and removed uh, 700 duplicates for me, okay? 164 agents. I had no idea I had that many agents in my database. Those were all filtered out. So all that automation um, that we built will help agents get ready to take advantage and actually use the predictive analytics. Uh, I'll show you real quick that a lot of people ask, can, can I sync multiple email addresses? Yes, you can sync multiple emails. In fact, most agents have a CSV or something in their CRM of like past clients or a list of people they're in uh, a club with or go to church with or school with. Any of those lists, if you just simply email those to us, we clean those up and add those in as well. And so of my 1,600 contacts, FIRST has identified 294 starred contacts. These are people that are more likely than the average person to list their property in the next six to 12 months. And I'll show you more about that. But the other thing that blew my mind, I only had 22 property addresses tied to my 1,600 contacts. FIRST has automatically added in about 600 property addresses already for me. Okay, uh, and then there are hundreds of social profiles. Uh, we just added Instagram support as well. So if sometimes you run through people that you haven't talked to in years, it's easy just to click on the link, refresh like who they were, how you know them and what's going on in their lives before you reach out. So that's the cleanup stuff. Literally, if agents get started on this, by tonight, they are gonna see that same result and it will get you from where you are today to call it 80% of the way to a clean database, literally uh, with automation helping you along the way. So here's how simple this is to, to actually use. We wanna get agents stop focused on organization and just procrastinating there. It's all about just making the outreach happen. So at the top, you can see I've got my 1600 contacts. I can search and, and call any of those. But what we show you is we've unlocked who are the likely sellers that you need to focus on in that database. So you can see in this very high level funnel, I've just got a visual way to see, here are the 253 opportunities, the most likely sellers in my network. And as I start reaching out to these people, we call it in flow, it's in conversation, you're actually engaged with these people. 
Um, and then once someone tells you, yeah, we're actually thinking about listing, they go to my hot list. So it's just a very lightweight CRM like type thing, but this is to help manage the outreach and conversations with your network. So what if I just click on the 255 there? Um, you now see the people in my network that have these seller stars. Uh, the cool thing is you can sort automatically by distance from your home. So the people I'm seeing here are like, friends and neighbors that live all in my neighborhood, like close by, and I can see who the likely sellers are there. But you can also sort this by star rating uh, or by who's new, like who has the rising seller stars. So uh, you see here, Emily Roberson at the top has a little new flag. Her, her rate, rating has gone up in the past few weeks, so that's somebody I need to pay attention to. Um, Another really cool thing, no matter where I am as an agent, I'm maybe waiting on an open house or a closing or in carpool, there is no excuse for me not just to pop this open. I can quickly see who the people I haven't talked to recently. Right here beside Bob Brooks, it's been seven days. John Lee, it's been a month. If I click on one of my contacts, first shows me a picture of their property. It also shows me their address. And any way that I've communicated with Bob in the past, it automatically connects me here in these blue bubbles. So I can call, text, email, or hit him on Facebook Messenger just by clicking right there on the text. It goes right to my native text. I reach out to Bob and thinking about you. Let's grab that beer we were talking about. Um, but then when I come back into the app, we celebrate with confetti, your phone buzzes, you're doing what you should be doing anyway. And my simple, Next step here is just whatever I need to do with Bob uh, to kind of keep that conversation going. So here's what I like to do. I click on that and whatever I learned, Bob's mom is having surgery next Wednesday. Give him a call to check on her and set up coffee. So this is kind of so like- We celebrate again at that point. And the really cool thing that helps me every day with this is when I come back, it automatically puts it in my next steps. And guess what? Next week, my phone's going to buzz. Check on his mom who had surgery. I would have never remembered that. And that stuff stands out. That is what differentiates me from other agents because I'm actually doing these little follow-ups. So once I check off my to-do list, we celebrate again with confetti. Um, and then it's just that simple outreach. Choose a couple of people to reach out to and set a next step. So this is essentially... So curious. Can you guys hear me, by the way? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is essentially like a, it's, I mean, it's a mobile CRM for, for basically your contacts and your phone. I mean, that's basically what it is. Yeah. I really, you know, we, we pair really well with, I think most of the other CRMs in the business, because I think most of them have been focused on making sure you've got all your marketing covered, right? Making sure everybody's on a newsletter. It's kind of the one to many blast kind of things. And very few of them have any type of mobile experience to where you're out on the go to make sure you're staying on top of all the conversations. So that's where we fit. So Nick, I'll, I'll show you one more uh, cool feature. Um, what I've seen is, you know, sometimes agents can get overwhelmed by seeing, wow, there are 250 people that are likely sellers. Um, you know, what we train them to do and coach them to do is just go ahead and choose a couple of people to connect, put them on your inflow list. But here's a way we've really found that gets people to actually take action each week. So a couple of times each week, we, we're going to buzz your phone and give you these simple little tiles that are challenges, just simple little bite-sized things to do. So this one says, find two people to get in flow with this week. And I'll show you what it looks like. So we just present some cards. And my goal here is to find two people I want to get in flow with. So if I want to add them to my call list, I just click the button. They're now on my to-do list. If I want to pass on Doug for today, I just swipe him to the side, just like your favorite dating app, and just go through until you find someone else to add on your list. So I'll add lit, list to the list. Um, and then what's going to happen is when I go back, they're right here on my next steps. Uh, and then I just need to simply reach out and, and take action on that. So it's just that really simple gamification that we found really causes the engagement to happen it results in people getting in front of more listings and winning more listings. It's great, man. I love it. <clears throat> and that's super, that's super awesome that there's these cool reminders in there. 
and you know, you're just reaching out to say hello and it's just keeping you in the loop in people's lives. It's good stuff. Cool. So let me, let me show you one other cool feature. This is uh, what you've been referring to. That's one of the, the newest features that uh, if agents want to get started with this uh, today, they're going to be with some of the first group to actually have this technology. Um, but when you, when you get started with first, you'll enter your uh, MLS agent ID. And so what this is, one of the first feature, it will give you kind of a real time running list every time you personally get a listing or that a, a, a house actually goes through closing. So that's pretty cool. But at the top, there's a little tab that says missed deals. And so what's going to happen is each week, if someone in your, in your network lists a property and you were not the listing agent, it's going to buzz your phone and let you know about that as well. And the reason we do this is not just to beat you upside the head with a stick, but it is simply to, to show you the value that's happening in your network. You have an advantage with these people and their deals happening right here that you probably didn't even know were happening. Now I'll tell you what agents like to do with this. And this is what I would coach to do to this is when Brandon comes through and I see I missed his listing. The first thing I see is, wow, these seller stars told me that first probably been telling me about this for months. But I'm going to reach out to Brandon and say, Brandon, I had no idea you and Kelly were even thinking about listing. Um, congrats. I'm actually, you may not remember, I'm a real estate agent locally. I would love to be a resource if I can help you in any way. What agents are telling me is they're getting referrals out of that. They're getting expired listings come back to them because of that. And what they're actually able to see for the first time ever is they have this real-time scoreboard of their personal network, how many deals they've won this year in the value, but uh, how many deals they've missed. And the goal here is to get you to focus on where you have an advantage in your network. That is where you should spend your time. That's really, I mean, what I love about that is that it's real, it's real accountability and it's, it's a lot of tough love right there. You know what I mean? When, <clears throat> when you see what you missed, like that's some tough love, you know? And I you know, love we actually have teams starting to do this as account as accountability meetings every week where they all open up their app and they talk through the deals that they missed. And uh, it's a great learning of what, what could we have done differently with this one or, or, you know, how could we have reached out to that one? It's really, it's really cool. Yeah. I love it, dude. It's fantastic. Um, so what's the price guys? The people are asking. Let's do it. So let me see if we got, so we did the, we did the demo. I think we were going to give you one quick. Yeah, we already talked about this. So again, we want to make you four times efficient. Every fifth person sell instead of every 20th. Um, I'll save Adrian's story. Well, it, Nick, one last thing I, want, I do want to mention from Adrian's story, because I think this is a great example where he came on board and uh, I personally was following along with him because he was kind of this rising star. He had done 4 million. He wanted to grow to 10 um, and he wanted to do more listings. And uh, I said, I checked in with him about two months in. I said, how's it going, Adrian? And he said, you know, I'm trying to figure out what emails I should send these people. Right. And he was, he, Nick, you mentioned this at the beginning of the call. He was a little bit hesitant of like, I don't know. These are my friends. How do I reach out to these people? I said, well, what do you, what do you normally do? He said, I, I like to get coffee with people. So I, I challenged him. I said, take the top 25 people we've listed any three-star contacts, right? It doesn't have to be the very top. Just pick 25. It would be easy. He said, okay, I found 18 because seven of them I don't really like, or I don't think they're going to do business with me, but he found 18. And the next few months he got coffee with them and five of them ended up listing with him. And I like that story because it shows the power of, like you said, the AI behind the scenes. So statistically, that's impossible. There's no way you can pick 18 people and have five of them sell, right? Um, it, you ha there's something intelligent going on below the surface. And then the other part was, only two of them told him in that first meeting they were going to sell. And I, 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 I bring that up in almost every time I talk about this for agents, because what it isn't is a seller lead list. You call through once and go, okay, here's what I got. Right. But he actually took the time to connect with 18 people. It was worth the little, the bit of thought to text them and engage with them because he got five listings. Right. But it was multiple conversations with three of them to get to the listing. So anyway, uh, it's a great product. Lots of agents loving it. I'll, I'll hand it over to Jim because he's actually the one that's been driving on on the cool offer that we put together for, for Lab Coats here. Yeah. Uh, cool. So what um, what we've done um, is and maybe since uh, you first heard about it, Nick. I mean, this used to be uh, you know like five hundred dollars a month when I first came on to first. We've been able to get the data cost down uh, at scale 
where we can now offer this uh, for agents. Individual agents can sign up for this. There's no setup fee up front. It's $149 a month, and it comes with that 12-month performance guarantee, those 15 or more predicted listings. So that's how agents generally sign up for it uh, through first.io. What I wanted to offer today was um, what we offer our largest brokerages. So anybody that is uh, list participating today, we put together a special promotional code just for lab code agents, and it will give you the same rate that you would get if you were at one of the largest brokerages uh, we work with. And so what that looks like, it takes it down 33% off of that regular price. Um, agents can sign up for the year, equals about $83 a month. Uh, and for this, we've also just given an opportunity if they want to get started on a quarterly basis versus an annual plan, we now are going to offer them an option to do that as well. So, And, and we've never done that. So never done Like that. this is the first time we've always required a 12 month commitment because we have these big data costs, but since we've started doing some of these lar larger partnerships, um, you know, we don't make any money off that because we spend so much on data, but we want you to get started because we, we know once you get your database cleaned up, you start seeing listings coming through. Um, now, so this is the first time we're off in quarterly. I just want to, I just want to drive home to people watching. Right. So like I hear all, I hear this all the time from agents who have a lot of technology and technology does not close deals for you. People have to realize that no. it only makes it easier for you to get there. And so what's so cool about this product is it's basically telling you every day who you should make contact with, whether it's a phone call or a text message, whatever, just reach out in some way, shape or form. And over time, you're going to start nurturing these people again. If you've, if you've forgotten to reach out over time in the past and you've kind of let them fall by the wayside, just start having conversations. Just start seeing how they're doing. Invite them to coffee. Buy them lunch. Eventually, you know, if the app says that they're possibly going to sell, I mean, the app isn't always right because it's not 100%, but there's a good chance that, like I saw in my database, there were 32 people in my database that sold their house this year, Right. I mean, that's real numbers. That's real volume and, and commission. So they're basically telling you who to reach out to and when. <laughs> like, and it's listings too, right? I mean, that's the other part that I, I've often, you know, heard a lot of agents say, I really want to grow the listing business. And we really haven't found anything better. You know, getting into conversation uh, before they decide to sell. That's, that's where it's fed. Yeah. Do you want me to go to the next one? Well, and, and uh, the other thing yeah. I, I tell, we're going to, uh, tell people how to get started here. The other thing I suggested to Mike is let's have a little fun today. And one of the best ways that we found to get people to do that outreach, um, AirPods are a great solution for that. So what we are going to do today, if you like to get started with this special discount, or if you just want to enter a, a raffle, we're going to draw, give away a free pair of AirPods um, for everybody that's listening that text in uh, today. So what you do is just pull out your phone, open up a new text message, and just send a, a text to this phone number. It's 919-372-0123, 919-372-0123, and just put LCA in that text. It will send you back a link that will give you that special code that will take that 33% off if you want to get started. So we've carved out a, a, a handful of seats for this group today. Um, the offer will run through midnight. So if you're interested, go ahead and do that. But regardless, go ahead and send it in. We'll put your name in the raffle and then we'll, uh, we'll text out the winner here shortly. Oh my gosh, I need some new AirPods. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sorry. right. I am excluded from this. I'm excluded from this offer, guys. Nick, we need to get you some first branded AirPods regardless. Oh, I have, um, I have Lab Coats orange AirPods. Yes. There you go. See? Uh, they're, they're actually orange inside. So yeah. that's great. Um, but yeah, so this I'm, is awesome, I'm guys. super excited. Um, I'm super excited about the quarterly side. I think over the last three and a half years, since we spend so much money on data, it's really hard. You know, a lot of software companies, you're just, it's, it's essentially free. But when we spend four or $500 on data for every customer, it's always been hard for me to, I've always wanted to give, give people a trial. And so this is pretty much as close as we can get. We've got a quarterly option uh, that we've never offered before. And so we really want people to try it out, especially this time of year. Yeah. You know, getting your database together now, this is the time to start talking with people that are thinking about listening in the spring. So you're going to oh. see a huge return on this. Totally, 100%. Uh, guys, I love it. Um, if anybody has any questions for these guys, you can post it in the um, 
in the video, uh, comments in the video, or can they kind of email you guys with any specific questions? How do they get in touch with you? Hey, uh, yeah, they can, they can do that. I, what I've, I've figured I'd do, there are usually three questions everybody asks, and so maybe I can hit these real quick for you. First question is, is my data secure? So um, that is something that's fundamentally very important to us. It's important to know this is your data, it's not shared with your broker, any other third party, and in fact, anytime you want this data, uh, you can click a button in the app, it will automatically email you a CSV of your cleaned up data. So if you wanna leverage this for your CRM, for any other solution, this is a way to get all that kind of pulled together for you and then simply get it uh, emailed to you. So that's first question. Uh, second question is, um, if, can I put multiple email accounts on this? Absolutely, you can do your work email, your Gmail, uh, multiple accounts. It will merge those contacts together, try to get the duplicates out for you. Uh, and then the, the last question people ask is around, uh, what if I have a list of past clients or a top producer list or something in my CRM? Yes, you can take that list. You simply don't have to clean it up, just email it to us. We will clean that up, try to add property addresses if they're not already there, and then merge that together with the other contacts that we've already sourced in. So um, that's the way it works. Uh, it's just a super way to jumpstart getting your database clean. Like Mike said, this is the time to start getting ahead of spring listing. So that is why uh, a lot of agents are jumping on this yeah. right now. Couple questions, couple questions. Someone says, how does this product sync with your CRM? So like, do you guys have access to certain CRMs where databases are other than email and phone? Yeah, good question. Uh, sorry about that. So Nick, it's, um, uh, it's a really important question. Here's the way we are, we're solving that in two ways. And, and since I'm CEO, I can speak to both of them, I think. Um, one, we're building uh, you know, API connections to go and integrate with a lot of them. Uh, but where we started was uh, with your phone and your email, because everyone that is going to know Nick Baldwin's name when you call and be like, oh, it's great to hear from you is in your phone or in your email, right? And we want to stay in sync there because that's where your new contacts will come in, right? And so one of the things we often caution people is not to throw, you know, 20,000 leads in here and then you don't know anyone on the list. So we started with making sure we sync with all the different email providers and phone and all that stuff. So that was our first priority. Now, what we don't want is, like you said, this seems like a really simple, lightweight way to follow up with your network. We don't want you to have to log that back in some other system, right? So that's the part we're building right now, and we've got a great development team looking at you know, all the different uh, API connections so that you can log it back. Does that make sense? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. I'm muted. I'm answering the question for Mike on the thread, just saying that you know APIs for CRMs is something you guys are working on, but if they close a deal with someone or that person is important to them, chances are that they're in their email and they're in their phone. And that's where you guys wanted to start. You wanted to get like really granular and really, um, you know, really personal. That's right. That's right. And um, the other part is since you're logging your conversations and notes and all that stuff in our system now, a lot of agents love that because it buzzes their phone and reminds them and all that. We want to make sure we can push that back to a CRM if you have to report somewhere else. So that's okay. what we're working on right now. Yep. Cool. Um, sounds good. And someone wanted to know if there's a code they need for the $83 a month or do they just what LCA they do? use the code LCA all the way through. Okay. So go to the website. You can go to the website and pop in LCA and it'll drop price down. That's um, pretty capital letters. It, it doesn't matter, matter man. We, we make it super stupid, Dude. simple, easy. Look at what that. Else you, you think of everything. That's right. That's right. Um, I love it. Uh, this is fantastic. It's a great deal. Um, and it's convenient. It's on your phone. It tells you who you need to reach out to. And it shows you like the legitimate social proof. That's you, right. Do you guys have, do you guys have um, a notification that pops up when someone in your database listed their house and you didn't get the listing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be sick. We do. In fact, uh, I don't know if you know, well, I, I probably shouldn't name names. Uh, a broker owner who we both know uh, called me the other day and said, oh man, I just got another push notification that I missed a $3.4 million listing and I'm terrified. I don't want to click on the app and see it. No, so, dude, I know, I know. Yeah. I love that. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, we, we, we do. We also, you know, 
push and notify you and remind you when some new person is likely to sell on the positive side so we can get you in the flow there. Um, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Well, this is great, guys. I love it. I appreciate you guys being on. I think it's a really useful app, uh, especially nowadays um, when getting in front of your sphere of influence um, is more important than ever. You know, you got a lot of disruptors out there trying to get in between you and your past clients. And this is something that, you know, definitely helps keep that from happening and reminds you, you know, who to stay in touch with and when. So I, I really appreciate that. And I think it's a great, um, a great tool for everyone to have in their tool belt. And it's 83 bucks a month. I mean, geez, that's so cheap. That's just so cheap. This I know. So we have people telling us we're charging too little now, which is great. So I don't, I don't worry about that. The, the last thing, Nick, I'm going to take it. It's now my personal ambition to figure out how we can help you win more of that $20 million in volume over the next year. Um, uh, but we also have like coaching and training, other things to help you get set up. There's a great support team here. So that subscription is not just a piece of software yeah. and we hand it to you and say, good luck, but we want to make sure it fits with your day-to-day -day workflow and get you trained. I'm going to get my entire team in my Michigan hooked up with the app. So I'll reach out to you guys later. Um, cause I, they need to get on there. Cause I, since I've been in Michigan, I've, I haven't uh, utilized this as much. Um, so I need, to get, I need to get them hooked up. So I'll reach out and do that. But awesome. this is, thanks guys, appreciate you being on. It was a lot of fun and a lot of great info and cool technology is uh, always geeks me out. So I'm glad, I hope everyone enjoyed it. And I uh, hope you guys have a great day and you know, get in touch with these guys and get that great deal if you're interested in giving it a shot. Is it month to month, the 83 bucks? Or it's yearly, it's yearly. Yearly and quarterly, yearly or quarterly. So yeah. Uh, gotcha. it's that. Because you have to get, you have to give something like this at least three or four months. That's right. You, you will not see, you will not see results. I mean, what's funny is actually the last anecdote, Nick, we had a, we had a broker owner that we had rolled out with their office, write us in. And he said, it was, was about three months in. He said, everyone who signed up has one, has at least one listing. And one, one of our agents has nine that you guys have predicted. Nine. Like, how is it not? How is everyone not signed up for this product? So I'm not saying you can't win listings right out of the gates. But yeah, you got to commit and do some follow up uh, to get them on the books. So, gotcha. All right, guys. Well, have an awesome day. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. All right. See you next week.